Hello, this will be a tutorial of how to create 2D movement within Unity. I've already created a 2D game project in Unity, so that's what the screen's showing now. It is a blank 2D project, and we're going to create this project from scratch. So this video will be discussing how to create uh, character movement or player movement, as well as uh, camera movement, uh, and then some later videos we'll come back and talk about how to do uh, variations of that and adjustments of uh, what we can do with the player movement with some pickups and platforms and things like that. So this first video is going to be setting up the player movement. We're going to go ahead in the hierarchy tab and create uh, a couple of 2D objects. So we're going to go the plus symbol, 2D object, sprites, and we'll do a square. This is going to be our player, so I'm going to go into the inspector and retitle that player. It also retitles it in the hierarchy. I'm going to reset my transforms by clicking on the three dot button beside transform and do reset. That puts our square in the center of our composition. This is going to be the starting position for the player. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and create a background as well. So we do the same thing, 2D object sprite square. And we're going to reset that as well. And we will call this one background. Then now I'm going to scale this up so that it's outside of the space. We can also bring in a graphic, but this is going to be just a background, a play space. <clears throat> I'm going to add a basic gray to this as well, medium, kind of blue gray. This will be the background. My player is hidden, so one way we can adjust vertical hierarchy closer to the camera is by using sorting, sorting layers. So if I go to player, sorting layers, there's none right now. Well, actually, uh, in previous file, I've added some. So let's go uh, take these and remove them out. And then we talk about how to add them. So in uh, the player, underneath sorting layers, there's just the default one. And I guess my player is still there. Yeah, there we go. So what we're going to do is uh, go to the sorting layer drop down and choose add sorting layer. And we're going to create a new one by hitting the plus symbol. And we'll first title this one background, and then we're going to create one for the player. All right, so the vertical hierarchy is important here. The background needs to be at the top, and the player needs to be underneath the background. Right, I'm going to go back and click on my player and my hierarchy, and then in the sorting layer, I'm going to change this to player. And what that should do is move the square we got for the player so it's visible in front of the background. I'm going to go click on the background object and change that sorting layer to background as well. <clears throat> so it's a vertical hierarchy list. The top ones will be behind the ones that are underneath that. Okay, so we have our background and we have our player. Uh, they're both named. What we are going to do is go ahead and add a couple of components. Components allow us to edit and adjust what happens to this player object or anything else. So for the player, I'm going to click add component. And I'm going to choose, let's see, the first one's going to be rigid body. And I'm going to make sure I choose rigid body 2D. We're not going to make any other adjustments right now other than uh, let's turn off gravity. We'll come back to that later. So I'm going to turn off gravity by typing in gravity scale of zero. Because one is default. And I'm going to click on add component again. And we're going to do a box collider. We're going to do box collider 2D, considering this is a 2D project. All right, there you go. So as default, the box collider is going to be a green wireframe and it's going to make it the same size of uh, our object or our character here. I'm going to select my background. I'm going to create a box collider for this as well. I really want to create a box collider so that the player can't move beyond the play space. So I'm going to do add component and we'll do another box collider 2D. I don't want this box collider for the background to be the size of the, the entire shape. I want it to be just at the top. So what I'm going to do is uh, the X is the horizontal and the Y is the vertical axis. So let's type in like point 1, point 0.45, point 0.05, that'll work, point 0.05 <clears throat> for one scale. And then I'm going to take the offset X and just move it over so it's close to that side. So we'll say like 0 0.47, 0 0.49, that'll work for now. We want it to be uh, so the player can't reach the actual boundaries. I could actually create some other graphics and put them over here, but we'll just do box collisions for the background right now. 
So I've got one box collider. Now I've scaled it and positioned it with offset and, and size. And then I'm going to click the three dots beside box collider and choose copy component. And then we'll select that through button, three dot button again and choose paste component as new. And that paste that a copy of that right underneath it. And for this one, all I should have to do is let's try doing a negative dot 49 offset. It's a little off, so maybe we'll do negative dot 48 or 85. There you go, that'll work. To try to make it as even as possible there. And then I'm going to uh, copy and we'll paste this again. Paste component is new. And then let's remove the offset and we're going to flip the values here. So we're going to say y is 0 0.05 and 1 for x for the size. Okay. We might just dial that up a little bit. Point, um, 0.1, that'll work. 0.1. So scale x1, scale y, 0.1. And then this time we're going to move the y offset. So maybe we'll do 0.49 again. Oh, not 49, 0.49. There we go. So that moves this box up here. <clears throat> and we're going to copy and paste this again. And then we'll do a negative y.49 there. It moves it down to the bottom. And we can do negative maybe 48 again. That'll work. So basically, the player is not going to be able to move beyond these collision boxes. Right? It'll stop because the player has a collision box. And now we have four collision boxes for the background. The next thing to think about is the camera size. So if I select the camera, this is a preview of what the game will see, uh, the player will see. And if I change the size, let's do something much higher like 10. You can see it's zooming out, so it's a further uh, camera. If you change it to 2, that's a much closer camera, or 1, that's a much closer camera. Uh, maybe we'll try 5. It's a little bit small, so maybe we'll try 4. Yeah, maybe we'll, do, maybe we'll do five for right now so we can see the motion of the, the player as we get started. We can also change the background. So if I go to game mode, I have the background of the background image as gray, but um, I can also change the background of the camera, which once we start playing around, moving the player around, you'll be able to see the background. Um, let's make it you know, much darker gray. There you go. So we can tell the difference between our play space and our background behind it. So underneath the camera settings, we can change the background to a dark, dark gray, whatever color you might want there. Note that in a 2D version, uh, we have the projection change to orthographic, so that way it is a straight on view and it doesn't calculate perspective. So next thing we need to do is set up the player movement. All right, so the player movement, uh, we'll do a basic version of the player movement and come back later and make a lot of adjustments to it and show some variations. So to do a player movement, what I'm going to do first in the Assets folder is right-click and create a new folder. And we'll call this one Scripts. And to do the player movement, we're going to need to create a C-sharp script. So I'm going to go into that Scripts folder. I'm going to right-click and I'm going to choose Create C-sharp Script. And we'll call this one Player Movement. This is going to be our Player Movement Script. And there's a preview of it. We're going to go to our Player. And in our player, we're going to go down to the bottom where we can see add component. I'm going to drag my player movement script to my add component. That adds the script to the player object. Alright, so I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code for my uh, scripting tool. Uh, you can use whatever you might like. First off, I'm going to go to File, Open Folder, and I'm going to go find my folder. So here's my folder, and then I'm going to choose Select Folder. And this opens up uh, any files associated with that. So here is my player uh, movement script. Doesn't have anything in there right now, uh, but it does uh, have the basis for Unity to start connecting with it. All right, so we're going to add a couple lines of code here and then go test this out. And then we'll make some more refinements to that. All right, so this is a C -sharp, C sharp script. Uh, I don't need this kind of extra line right there, so I'm going to delete that. I am going to need a private variable so that I can connect the rigid body component uh, to my script here and make adjustments to edit that rigid body, apply force to it to make the player move around. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a private 
uh, private variable. I'm going to do private rigid body 2D. And I'm going to call this variable RB uh, for rigid body. And I'm going to do semicolon to end that line. So that's going to go above the void start. In the void start, I'm going to call that variable, so rigid body, which is whoop, just RB. I might need to remove it out because there's the connection there, RB, rigid body. And then we're going to choose get component which will connect it to our Unity file. And I need to connect that to the rigid body 2D component in there. So you can tell it what component to connect to. So this is basically in Unity, uh, the connecting to this rigid body component of the player. Okay. All right, uh, so we could use void update, but what's actually gonna be better if we use what's called void fixed update. And this will allow it to check to see it, uh, see if the action is going in uh, a less than a frame uh, every check, right? Void update is every frame, fixed update is less than a frame, and it's the determined value according to what we've set up in Unity. Uh, but this is going to be better for any kind of player motion. Um, so void fixed update is what we're going to use. And we need to create a couple of variables, and then we're going to use the vector2 node. Uh, for it to um, to connect the motion up to when I use WASD to move my player around. So what we're going to do first is create a float that's going to be called move horizontal and that's going to get connected to an input and there is a default input called get access. So input dot get access and then I need to tell it which one I'm looking for, so horizontal, and we'll end it with the semicolon. So what this is is we're creating a float that we can then use in our code here in a minute. That's going to be called move horizontal, which basically means get our input access, which is either our uh, left or right arrow keys or the A or D key, uh, and that's signified by the word horizontal. So this is our inputs. We also need a vertical input, so we're going to do float move vertical equals to input dot get access and this is going to be the vertical axis so that's either the up or down arrow or the W or S key All right, so those are going to be variables we're going to add within this fixed update I'm going to return down and now we're going to use the vector2 command Whoop, if I type it correctly vector2 uh, movement vector2 movement so this is going to be <clears throat> the ability to move in a 2D scale or 2D axis up or down or left and right in our composition. So vector2 movement equals to new vector2 which will update it move horizontal comma move vertical and then we will use our semicolon. So basically we're going to be connecting our new vector to according to what happens with our WASD or arrow keys. I'm going to hit return again. And then here's where we add the forces to uh, the rigid body. So basically we created a new movement variable that we're then going to call here. We're basically going to say as the WSD or arrow keys move horizontal or vertical, we're then going to add that force applied to that to the rigid body which is how the player character will actually move. So I'm going to do rigid body rb dot oh, I'm still adding that there rb dot add force and then I'm going to do uh, movement okay. it's going to be in parentheses semicolon to finish that off. Alright so we've created a private rigid body Actually, this needs to be RB. We might could even change this to RB1, um, just so that way it's not going to continue to try to autocorrect that to the word rigid body. So a private rigid body is going to be a variable RB1, and then in void start, we're going to call that variable and say get the rigid body component of the player character. 
uh, object and then in avoid fixed update we're going to add two float variables a move horizontal move vertical which gets the vertical or horizontal movement axis of WASD or the arrow keys and then we're going to create this movement vector variable <clears throat> that houses the move horizontal and move vertical attributes or values incoming from the uh, keyboard and then we're going to add uh, a force to the rigid body with that movement change all right, let's hit Control S to save. Let's go into Unity and see if we have any errors. Okay, we don't. The errors will pop up down the bottom and tell you you have some errors or warnings. And so let's play. Let's hit the play button and let's see it move. All right, so if I use WASD, it's moving. It's moving rather slow, but it is moving when I use WASD around. So that shows that that action that we created within that script is working. It's moving a little slow, so what's nice is if we add a speed variable that can then be used to within Unity uh, to adjust this on the fly. So we don't wanna have to go back into our script every time we wanna adjust the speed. So what we can do above our private variable is add a public float, and we'll call this one speed, semicolon at the end of that. So a public variable will allow it to be called and used within Unity in the user interface. A private variable is only used within this script. So we want a variable that we can access and change the value pretty easily within Unity as we're playtesting, so we don't have to go back and forth to this script. So we want a public variable called speed, it's a float. And the only line of code we need to change down here is the add force one. We're gonna do movement times the asterisk symbol our float speed. So movement times speed. Let's hit control S to save. Let's go into Unity. Okay. And let's uh, look at our player attribute or player object again. And now we have a variable called speed for our player movement. So variable speed uh, if it's zero, it's not going to do anything. So if we hit play, so we do need to increase. Let's just try five, and we'll hit play. Okay, so now that moves a lot faster. All right, so we can stop and we can increase that to maybe ten. And go back and hit play. There we go. So that's much faster. We see the player moving around. I have the scale for the camera the size of the document or our scene so you can see if I go to the corners it's not going to fly off the edge of the composition it's stuck by the bounding box here all right. all right so that's the basis for adding uh, a player movement to a custom file in a 2d game uh, that'll wrap up for this video we'll come back in the next video and talk about camera controls um, and adding some adjustments to uh, the player motion for different types of 2D games.